Hello. Um, I'm Andres Forgax, uh, co-founder and CEO of Modern Meadow. And I'm here to talk about how biofabrication unlocks the power of nature to transform the world of materials. Coming over here to Paris, I was actually reminded of a story about how a new material can change the world. This is aluminum. It was first isolated in pure form by European scientists in the early 1800s. And for many years, it could only be made in such small quantities and at great expense. As such, it was rarer and more expensive than even gold or silver. There is a story, in fact, about Napoleon III, that his fanciest dinnerware was made with aluminum. And on very special occasions, he would eat from aluminum plates while his guests had to make do eating off of gold. And across the Atlantic, in the United States, the Washington Monument was completed with a 100-ounce pyramid made of aluminum as its capstone. At the time, it was the largest piece of aluminum made. And it was first put on display at Tiffany's for crowds to admire before it was placed on the monument. Fast forward to today. Aluminum is everywhere. It is essential for our airplanes, our rockets, cars, buildings, and even soda cans. This material has changed our lives. The evolution of materials has driven some of the greatest innovations throughout history. So much so that various chapters in history have been named after materials. In the 20th century alone, it began with huge breakthroughs in polymers and plastics. And in the latter part, the second half of that century, we could not have the information revolution without advances in semiconductors. It is called Silicon Valley for a reason. This period also saw the discovery of another transformational material, DNA. Steve Jobs predicted that in this century, the greatest innovations will come at the intersection of biology and technology. I believe that we are about to enter a new material age that is powered by advances in biology. I would argue that we are at the very beginning of the biofabrication age. Now, what is biofabrication? Simply put, biofabrication is about building with biology, but at a macroscopic scale, at a level that you can see and feel. It is an interdisciplinary field which integrates biology, engineering, and design. And it involves working with organisms like yeast, bacteria, algae, um, and fungi, and designing them to be able to produce our desired materials. Aside from natural materials, 
and synthetic materials. Biofabrication enables an entirely new category of materials, where we can take the building blocks of nature, but enhance them with human ingenuity and creativity. For over a dozen years, biofabrication has been my entrepreneurial focus. And um, at Modern Meadow, we apply biofabrication to uh, reimagine leather without animals. Now, I did not study biofabrication nor leather in university. However, I did co-found a company called Organovo, which pioneered a form of biofabrication known as 3D bioprinting for medicine. And in parallel, I managed a venture fund which invested globally and became quite active in China. Uh, so much so that for a period of time, I went to live in Shanghai. And over years of traveling to and then living in China, I mean, I saw the economy booming, exploding production and consumption. However, it also came at visible cost to the environment. And I was concerned. I started thinking about how we could take the principles of biofabrication and think about producing our everyday consumer materials in more responsible ways. And so this became the founding idea behind Modern Meadow. Namely, could we make animal products without animals? And as our company grew, our vision also evolved, and uh, it became transforming the world of materials by unlocking the power of nature to inspire design for a healthier planet. Now, how do we do this? Well, our insight at Modern Meadow is that leather is made with collagen. Collagen is one of the most important proteins in nature. It is the most abundant protein in your body, and it is the most important protein building block in your skin. But rather than deriving this from an animal, we learned, we learned how to produce collagen in other ways. And our approach to biofabrication essentially involves three steps. Design, grow, and assemble. First, we designed a microorganism. In our case, this is yeast to be able to produce collagen. And we do this by engineering the genetic circuitry of yeast so that it can grow collagen through fermentation. And next, we're able to grow up, have the yeast multiply and grow up in large quantities and produce collagen through fermentation, much like you would brew beer except for in our microbrewery, we are producing a collagen-rich broth rather than a pilsner. And finally, we purify this collagen and we can assemble it in a, a, a variety of different ways to create a whole range of material properties depending on what we're aiming for. Now, why do this? And why leather? 
leather is actually a beautiful material. And it's been used for thousands of years on a whole range of applications. It is cherished and it shows up on some of our most desirable consumer goods. And there's a huge opportunity. Traditional leather plus synthetic leather is actually a $200 billion market. But it's got challenges. It relies on uh, raising livestock, which is the largest user of land, water, and one of the biggest contributors to greenhouse gas emissions. Leather production also involves transporting materials, often tens of thousands of kilometers from farm to factory, with a lot of waste along the way. And as animals are increasingly concentrated to grow meat, this comes at the expense of the quality of hides. But also, leather really offers a limited set of material properties. You really just you get what you get from the back of the animal. By contrast, through biofabrication, we can build the material from the protein on up. And this allows us to create benefits for consumers, manufacturers, and for the planet. So for consumers, we can actually tune the properties of the material, and we can create a whole range of performance properties and look and feel. And increasingly, consumers want transparency. They want to know where their materials come from and how they're made. For manufacturers, biofabrication offers innovation and differentiation in the materials that go into their products. And it also radically simplifies their supply chain. Our process, end-to-end, -end, takes less than two weeks. And it can be localized, which means it can enable just-in-time manufacturing. And finally, for the planet, biofabrication has the potential to be more sustainable with no animals harmed. Over a year and a half ago, at an exhibit uh, of the Museum of Modern Art in New York, we introduced our first biomaterial brand, Zoa. Zoa derives from the Greek word for life, Zoe. And it is a celebration of life. It also happens to be the middle name of my five-year-old daughter. But that's just a coincidence. And Zoa is inspired by leather. And it builds on many of the properties we love about leather. But it can go far beyond in terms of design, performance, and functionality. This is not about imitation. It's about taking inspiration from nature and taking the building blocks of nature and being able to creatively reassemble them. Now, this is an amazing conference, Hello Tomorrow. And I can see that there's a wonderful gathering of innovators in deep technology. It is important, especially in the world of deep technology, that on the long journey, uh, you know, we share some insights and resources as we go from laboratory to market. So it is in this spirit that I wanted to offer you know, some of the lessons that I've learned you know, on, this, uh, on this path. So first of all, you can't do this alone. 
And it is important, at least I found, to find people that think very differently from you. As I've built Modern Meadow and other endeavors, I've always sought out people who think differently and who challenge my assumptions. And within Modern Meadow, we have world-class scientists and engineers working side by side with amazing designers. And it is at the interface of these fields where some of the most interesting innovation happens. And as a company, we really seek to partner. And we've partnered with best-in-class companies, both to develop our material technology, to show up in the market, and to scale its production. An example of this is Evonik, which is uh, a leading biochemical company which is scaling up our fermentation process. A second lesson. Worthwhile things take time and effort. There are often no shortcuts. And for us in Modern Meadow, we are part of a community of companies that are growing this field of biofabrication for the long run. We've planted fertile seeds, and really we're seeing them grow. But just as you wouldn't see a forest grow up overnight, in this industry, there is no overnight success. So it is important that we confidently look into the horizon and beyond just tomorrow, but into the next decade. This journey is worth the time and the effort. The impact will be material in every sense of the word. Thank you.